PPI is, of course, going to show us the inflation and how it's hitting producers of all those issues. It's a little further up the pipeline right now. And uh, Rick Santelli has that number. Rick. Yes, our wholesale uh, inflation read in the form of August producer price index hitting the wires and exactly as expected on headline, as Steve pointed out, minus 0.1. One-tenth of one percent negative is what we get. And, of course, that follows until it's revised down half of one percent. And, by the way, all high watermarks are from March of this year. 1.7 was that high watermark. Strip out food and energy core, one-tenth hotter. It's up four-tenths of one percent. That happens to be double what's in the rearview mirror. High watermark in March, up 1.3. If we strip out food, energy, and trade, it's up two-tenths, exactly matching expectations and exactly matching up two-tenths in the rearview mirror. Up one percent was the high watermark in March. Now, let's take the wide view year over year. PPI headline, final demand up 8.7%, one-tenth lighter than expectations, and definitely below 9.8% in the rearview mirror. High water mark there, 11.7%. Strip out food and energy year over year. It's hotter by 310, 7.3 in the rearview mirror, 7.6. High water mark, 9.7, as I said, all in March of this year. And finally, year over year X food energy and trade up 5.6 percent one tenth hotter than we were looking for two tenths light in the rear view mirror which was 5.8 high water mark there 7.1 so there's very little doubt that we have in my opinion probably had peak inflation the issue is how far and how fast it normalizes closer to something we recognize, and maybe more importantly for people to understand, a couple of three years down the road, seeing up two-tenths again or two percent is going to be very likely. Remember, we're measuring the rate of change. What probably won't change is the level we reach once we normalize. There are revisions trickling in. They're not super large. Uh, we'll go over those after the panel. Back to you. Hey, Rick, just uh, talk to speak to the market reaction, um, not just what we've seen in the last minute or so, but what we've seen throughout the course of the mo morning. Dow futures at this point are, are negative. We were up 150 points two and a half hours ago. Um, S&P futures are barely hanging in there. NASDAQ barely hanging in there. And then what you've seen with the Treasury yields this morning, too. Well, we were at 380 in a two-year before the number. We remain there. Those are 15-year highs. And if we look at the longer end, we're at 347 in a 10. We were whisker below 346 before the number hit. And maybe the 10-year and the 7-year are the two most important maturities to pay attention to, Becky, because they have not, I underscore not, taken out their mid-June high-yield closes. In the case of the 10-year, it was around 3.48. I can't stress how important that is. Uh, many viewers might not understand how technical analysis can fuel strategic trading activity, but indeed it does. I think we learned a lesson yesterday. Subtle changes in CPI, still well off its worst levels, can have outsized market impact. And I think that dynamic is going to continue. But there's hope. There's hope. Because at some point down the road, when we get a better CPI or PPI number, even marginally better, we could see an outsized reaction in the equities in an opposite direction from yesterday. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.